I think it is. Is it? Could it be? It is! Big Game Kid Cousins returns! <laughs> yeah! Woo! Boy. So much for the streak of great and interesting playoff games, huh? Every once in a while, you'll get a stinker. They can't all be epic. But nonetheless, we're here to talk about what just happened between the Minnesota Vikings and the San Francisco 49ers at the Field of Jeans Levi Stadium in this opening game of the divisional round of the playoffs. And heading into this matchup, you had the Minnesota Vikings seeming to have some momentum. Sure, they're the sixth seed, but they just went down to New Orleans on the road in what was supposed to be a tough place to play. And even after blowing a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter, go to overtime, and they end up pulling the game out, and they win with Kirk Cousins making a couple of big-time throws in that game. And while it wasn't great, who made the throws that you needed to have them make when they had to be made? And combine that with Dalvin Cook having a decent game on the ground and so forth. You know, the Minnesota Vikings had some reason to believe that they could have some success here against the San Francisco 49ers, especially when you look at a 49ers team whose defense wasn't as good towards the end of the season. I know injuries were certainly a part of that, and they were able to utilize that bye week to get pretty much everybody healthy and on the field, which was a significant victory for the 49ers themselves. But I think there's Part of this situation where with the 49ers heading into this game, they're the number one seed, they've got the home field advantage, and yet you just don't know if you can fully believe in them. Even though you know that defense can really get after the quarterback up front. Even though you know they've got a future first ballot Hall of Fame corner in Richard Sherman. Even though you know that this team has a really good offensive mind and play caller in Kyle Shanahan. You look at them and you say, I don't really know much about their offense outside of George Kittle and the quarterback who I don't know what to really make of yet in Jimmy Garoppolo. I can't name, if I'm an average fan, the 49ers running backs. I'd be lucky to name one of their wide receivers. Maybe you get lucky and think Emmanuel Sanders, but who the hell knows? But this is a team that has been bad the past couple of years. Now they find themselves in this spot. So combining that with what the Vikings did last week in the playoffs, you're looking at it and thinking, hey, maybe just maybe the Vikings can pull an offset here. And uh, that quickly went to bed. 49ers came right out of the gate and it was impressive. After a quick three and out on defense, boom, right down the field, touchdown. It was just like that. Five minutes, they're up seven to nothing. And you're like, oh, okay. But then it was crazy. The Minnesota Vikings responded Kirk ends up hitting uh, Stephon Diggs on a big touchdown. Akilah Witherspoon gets burnt and roasted and toasted, ends up getting benched. And if anything, it kind of feels like that was the big moment of the game. Once they got him out of the lineup, that defense changed dramatically. And you could already see early on that the Vikings were having some trouble protecting Kirk Cousins, and they were having trouble in particular uh, opening up holes in the running game up front against that really good 49ers front four. That Minnesota offensive line was just going to have a bad day in the office. But even after that, 49ers again, another touchdown. It's 14-7. to But you always sit there and you wonder with Jimmy G. He has this pattern and trend of two or two, three times a game. He's going to throw the ball right to you. And even when they're up 14-7, to deep in their own territory, here's Jimmy G. Doesn't even see Eric Kendricks at all. What a great play by Kendricks getting the pick, and you're sitting there and saying to yourself, ooh, is that the moment the wheels are kind of kind of fall off? Is that the moment where maybe the Vikings get a little bit of momentum? Is that the moment that changes the dynamic of this game? And the answer is not really. Vikings don't get in the end zone. They kick a field goal, it's 14 to 10, and they never score again. Meanwhile, the 49ers just really clamped down on the Vikings throughout the second half defensively and offensively. It was clear in the second half they made a conscientious effort. We're going to run the ball. Tevin Coleman had a big day. He went over 100 yards rushing average, like 4.8 yards a carry, two touchdowns. Raheem Moser had himself an adequate day in spelling Tevin Coleman. He also had over 50 yards rushing, 4.8 yards a carry. 
And you look you look at the box score of this game, you're going to see you know, Kirk Cousins completed 70-something percent of his passes. Yeah, but his yards per attempt was pathetic. It, it's a Trubisky type of performance. That if you didn't actually watch the game, you think, well, it wasn't really that bad, was it? Uh, but yeah, it was. And it certainly is not all on, as I will get to call him again, kid cousins. Because that Minnesota offensive line struggled all day long to protect him appropriately. Like, they just were really bad. And the 49ers defensive front with D Ford back and fold was really good. Everybody was getting on, in on the action. Nick Bosa has two sacks. Eric Armstead a sack. DeForest Buckner a sack. D Ford a sack. Hell, Solomon Thomas had a sack for crying out loud. They got six sacks and constant pressure on Kirk Cousins. They shut down the Vikings running game. So a team who's based themselves a lot on running the ball with Dalvin Cook and using that foolishly to set up their play action passing, you know, now had that taken away from them. And it was just a really, really rough day at the office. You had the pick that Kirk Cousins threw to Richard Sherman where Thielen kind of quit on the route. You know, once you got early into the second half, you know, at halftime you're talking about 14 to 10 game. You're like, okay, well, the Vikings are still in it. The longer they're in it, the better chance they have and the more confidence they're going to have. Now, that quickly went by the wayside. You know, and it just it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> it just wasn't meant to be. And in particular, the drive in the second half where the 49ers did nothing but run the ball. That was the moment in time that they broke the will and the spirit of the Minnesota Vikings. That's absolutely when it happened. Absolutely when it happened. Because once you got to that moment, you knew that it was all over. Like, there was just no coming back from it. You just knew. You could sense it. And then a little bit later, as you get to the fourth quarter, you got Marcus Sherrills, who usually has been a really good returner, muffing a punt. In particular, that's when you know it is all she wrote. So you could sit there and have Jimmy Garoppolo not have to do a lot, and he certainly did. He was 11 and 19. Um, you know, the one really bad pick, one nice touchdown to Bourne, uh, but it was it was enough. You know, and 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 that's what it was. It was enough for the San Francisco 49ers. They go on, they handle the Minnesota Vikings easily, and now they get to sit back and wait and see who they get to play, who will come to Santa Clara, who will come to Levi's Stadium to face them in the NFC Championship game. You know, the final takeaways for this, I look at Minnesota and I look at that offensive game plan, and it was just really puzzling to me. I'm not really sure what they were ever trying to establish in this game. And especially once you saw that the line was struggling to protect uh, Cousins, you got to figure out ways to scheme it, scheme it better. You got to roll your protections. You got to do some bootlegs. You got to do something to slow down that aggressive, fast, athletic, good as hell 49ers front four. And they just didn't do it. And I applaud Kyle Shanahan for kind of realizing the feel of the game as it was going on and, and real thinking to himself, you know what? We don't have to throw a ton. We don't have to hit a ton of big plays to win this game. Sure, we could be trying to exploit Xavier Rhodes in the passing game, but we'll probably still win because you certainly could and you probably certainly would. But if you don't need to, why do it? In this case, run the damn ball. And that's exactly what they did. They ran the ball down the throats of the Minnesota Vikings feeling more like the type of team, type of performance you would expect to see out of a Super Bowl contending team of the past. A team that runs the ball effectively between the tackles and plays great defense and in particular gets after the opposing quarterback. That was the formula for success for the San Francisco 49ers. And after this game and this performance, I look at them and say they are one win away from the Super Bowl. They are one win away from me getting a whole lot of crap about all the things I've ever said about Jimmy G. Even though he wasn't particularly great in this game, bottom line is, is they schemed well, they did enough, they adjusted, and they got the job done. And oh my God, if the 49ers actually go on to the Super Bowl, it's never going to end for me. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe 49ers fans, we need to figure out some type of bet here for that NFC Championship game next week. And I even... 
think I tried to put the Jeff Jinx on you guys by saying you guys would win by three. The 49ers broke the Jeff Jinx. Yes! Yeah! But nonetheless, it was overall an impressive performance by the 49ers defense and the 49ers running game, and it's got them on the doorstep of once again making it back to the Super Bowl.